Makes me look like an herbaceous border. The colour is the most becoming, though, definitely. Tell her to get rid of all this flummery and make sure she can have it ready by tomorrow. First thing. Went right up to Miss Lucy's door. Mm -hmm. Tell Nanny Collins I'll ring when I'm ready. Yes, my lady. Thank you, Lydia. Now, what have we done to make our Lydia so grumpy, hmm? Probably sheer terror. Nanny Collins can be quite fearsome about routine. With Mrs. Collins had her way, we'd all be having naps after lunch and supper by six. I've spoken to Mrs. McCluskey, and you and the children shall have the carriage tomorrow. Oh, but, I mean, thank you, madam. It'll be a treat for the children. And I dare say Edward can help you carry things. Really, Nanny, anyone would think I was proposing a punishment rather than a pleasure. Sorry, madam. I'm most grateful. Thank you, madam. That'll be all. No meal was tomorrow. Nursery's out, Mrs. Sinjin's out, Mr. Sinjin's off up north. Peace and quiet and a bottle of milk stout. Who oh. needs church? <laughs> Mr. Sinjin, get off all right? Yes, Mrs. McCluskey. Any chance of some grub? Oh, it's got supper to think of. I don't mind. Bread and cheese will do, mate. Mm. I didn't get any tea, did I? It'll be sandwiches for you tomorrow. Hey? Mrs. Sinjin says you're to drive Nanny Wickham and the children in the carriage for their excursion. Edward will also be able to carry the picnic basket. Can I have a little piece, Nanny Wickham, ain't you? What do you mean? What, you're telling me Mrs. Sinjin offered her and the kids a carriage just like that? Nah, she must have put in a word. Anything to make her life easier. Maybe it's just the children are going in for a spot of fishing. Yeah, well, I'm not biting. Dear, dear, Lydia, why so downcast? Sir. You seem unusually gloomy. Nanny Collins using the whip hand, is she? Oh, no, sir. Then I hope your young man hasn't been boorish enough to upset you. I ain't got a young man, sir. It's just Nanny Wickham uh, at the St. John's across the square and the Hutchinson's under Nanny, Miss Randall. Or they're going to the country tomorrow for a picnic and I asked Nanny Collins if I could go instead of my half day next week, see? And I take it Nanny Collins said no? Oh, yes, sir. I ain't seen the country since I was at home. Let's get this back. The ladyship will be wondering where I got to. Door to my room open. All right. Good night. Mm. 
morning, nighty night. Never seen you without a uniform on, that's all. Picnic basket. <laughs> Come on, Sloco, just time to get going. What you got there? It's secret. Oh, all right, don't show me if you don't want to. You can look. I didn't touch anything. I was especially careful. Oh, well, never mind, eh? You can tell me about it later. And as proud. She told me to use eggs for you and all. You're a tough conversation, you are. Really? Ed reckons you're chasing after him. He reckons that's why Mrs. Sindrum gave you the carriage, so that um, he'd have to come with you. If I want the news, I'll read the paper. Thank you very much. Does he? Morning, Anna. Morning. We've introduced ourselves. Isn't it funny being on duty without our uniforms? <laughs> to get changed. I'm not doing another clean apron till tomorrow. I meant to go out. Her ladyship has given you permission to move your Sunday off. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Nanny Clinton. <laughs> it's her ladyship you should thank. You're a very lucky girl. Go on, then. Me thinking Mr. and Mrs. Sinjin have got themselves a couple of new coachmen. Jack Wickham, you must be Ned. Yeah. Hello, ladies. Hello, You've been here before? No. How do you know my name anyway? Oh, Matty keeps me up to date on all the gossip. She said there was a new footman started. Hey, you can get through to the river here, I'll show you. said Ned was to carry things. Who's 
was ever so good in Mrs. St. John to let us have the carriage, wasn't it? It's just a shame he had to come and all. I was really looking forward to this. It's nice to look at, isn't he? There you go, he's nice to look at, and he's company for Jack. Oh, come on, Matty. Don't let him spoil our day. Anyway, Mrs. St. John just wanted to make sure the coast was clear. I think if they really love each other, well, it's meant to be, isn't it? Maybe it is. Mrs. St. John and Captain Mason aren't married, Hannah. Love can exist without it. You ever drink in the Eagle and Child? Down Limehouse way? Nah. <laughs> Could have sworn you look familiar. It's got one of those faces. Huh. One to five ago. Huh. Be my guest. I won. No, you didn't. Did he, Bertie? Well, I'm not sure. You killed the evil wizard who was holding me prisoner in the Dark Tower, and I'm the beautiful princess, and you've got to come and rescue me. He's killed you. Die! <laughs> I thought it unnecessary to have myself announced. Of course. What brings you to town? We had to come up to see Gerald's mother. She is unwell. I'm sorry? She has had these attacks every summer since we were married. I can only think it's sheer ill nature on her part. Her vexing. You were on your way out? No. Your butler tells me Arnold is not at home. Visiting the great unwashed. It really was too good of you to think of us. Naturally, I thought to call upon you. It is the duty of a sister, after all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you still haven't told us how you managed to escape your nanny Collins. Oh, it was Lady Lamson Scribner. She was the one who said to have the day off. I'm never so lucky to work for such a nice family. I mean, they'd be nice even if they didn't have a title. Oh, <laughs> very broad-minded of you. I mean, Lord Hugh. He'd be a proper gentleman, even if he weren't. If you see what I mean. You ought to be careful of your Lord Hugh, my girl. Oh, he's been ever so good to me, Matty. Toffs are never nice without a reason. Matty's right. You should watch it. Well, I'm off to dip my feet in the river. Anyone coming? Yeah, I think I'll, I'll stay here. Maybe I will keep you company. <laughs> good. Matty? No, I better stay here. Make sure no one gets into mischief. No rest for the wicked. She must feel like this all the time upstairs. Lady of leisure. Go on, then. Since it's a Sunday. Tell Cook we only require a light luncheon potter. I find anything more unsettling to the digestion. Papa was the same. I could digest pebbles. You take after the other side of the family. She said she was dining out. What am I supposed to feed them on? Thin air? Well, Mrs. St. John did say a light lunch. Let's see. Consomme, cheese souffle, asparagus hollandaise, fruit cup and a savoury. 
How's that sound? Souffle. We got hardly any eggs. Pringle cooked most of them for the nursery picnic. I can't do souffle without eggs. Or hollandaise. What have we got then? Kippers. Susanna's going to be the clever one of all of us, I reckon. Sharpshears. My dad had his way. None of them would go to school, but my mum and me always sticks up for him. You got a family, Anna? We still haven't caught anything, you know. Well, they're in the wrong place for a start. Do you know about fishing, then? Of course I do. Hold that, will you? Lydia! 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 Well, I could really show you some it. Champion trout tickler me. <laughs> Do they laugh? <laughs> <laughs> no, little they just go to sleep and you pick them up and put them in your net. That's not very sporting. Quite right, Tom. Chuck us an egg, will you, Matty? What's the magic word? Just chuck us an egg, Sarge. Sarge? Yeah, when we were little, Matty was so bossy, we used to call her Sarge. Short for Sergeant Major. <laughs> 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 an egg, was it? I had word on Thursday, Victoria. Yes? Captain Mason is here, madam. Oh, peculiar time for a visit. Captain Mason is in the guards. Arnold has made something of a favourite of him. He must have forgotten to tell him he'd be away. Show him up, Potter. I shall play the Good Samaritan as it's Sunday. I think Captain Mason sometimes finds the mess a little uncivilised for his taste. Captain Harry Mason? Yes. You know him? I know something of his reputation. Gerald's younger brother, Roderick, is in the guards. Of course. I try not to indulge in gossip. It is perfectly proper to indulge in gossip, Victoria, if it prevents one from being its subject. If you'll follow me, sir. Thank you, Potter. Oh, Potter, there's a hackney carriage outside. He's been told to wait. Could you inform him there's been a change of plan? Of course, sir. Thank you. Mrs. Sinjin comes from a very respectable family. Her father's the nephew of an owl. Didn't stop her mother, though, did it? What on earth do you mean, Lydia Weston? She ran off. The children's tutor. It was half her age and all. It was ever such a scandal, Nanny Collins says. Everyone knew? I bet they did. He was an Italian. A count, Nanny Collins says. Though counts over there is ten a penny. The children were only right small and they were never allowed to see their mother again. Fancy just leaving them. Nanny Collins says it's very difficult if there's someone like that in the family. Well, for the girls, I mean. When they get married. Why? Everyone expects they're going to act the same. Do you think she will? With Captain Mason? Of course not. You've got a lot to learn, Lydia. You really do. So, Roddy Heaton's your, um, nephew? My brother-in-law. Of course. <clears throat> Dark horse, old Roddy, don't you think? <clears throat> Still, he's, uh, engaged to a perfectly charming girl. Cecily Kempton. 
Gerald introduced them, as a matter of fact. I must commend your husband's eye. She's a perfect peach. Gerald wanted to take holy orders, but he inherited the estate before it could come about. Still, he's always mindful of the happiness of others, isn't he, Lavinia? Indeed. <clears throat> I'm very ignorant, I'm afraid. My own people are from Hampshire. But Norfolk is a county one has spoken of most highly. I don't see why. It is far from picturesque, and the damp is quite penetrating. Ain't that your job? I put things out, I don't clear up. Wouldn't suit me. Dressing up, taking orders. It'll do me for now. How'd you earn a crust, anyway? Oh, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Oh, yeah. You heard of Charlie Clifford? Runs a few businesses down Limehouse Way. You now I'm getting the wrong side of him. That's right. Done some work for him a while back. What about now? Oh, you know. Little bit of this, little bit of that. I'll be doing some delivering for uh, Liberties, but don't know how long I'll stick it. I'm gonna get in touch with Charlie again, once he's out of Pentonville. Jack had a promising musical career at one stage, didn't you, Jack? Thank you. Ha. I didn't know you were musical. I'm not. I was too modest. He had the loudest voice in the church choir until he was 14. Oh. <laughs> I shall give your regards to Roddy. Good afternoon, Captain Mason. Please convey my regrets to Arnold at having missed him. Oh, how boneheaded of me. There was an article that Arnold particularly wanted you to see, Captain Mason, something concerning the Liberal Imperialist Council. I'll fetch it for you. Surely Potter could find it. Potter's eyesight is not all it should be. Waiting, <laughs> private dining room arranged. She just descended on me like a biblical plane. <sighs> How on earth the two sisters managed to be so different? We're not so unlike. Lavinia is no fool. There seem to be any number of things which Lavinia is not. It was unwise for her to see you, Harry. Unfortunately, propriety <laughs> was so. I shall write. Victoria, you know, you really are a mystery to me. Not too sphinx-like, I hope. Do you really think I'm unlike Lavinia? As champagne from soda water. I better have the strawberries. <laughs> I didn't want you to miss out. <laughs> oh, I don't think I could. <laughs> Bit of a banquet, wasn't it? Mm. Well, sorry to disturb you. Oh, you're not. Honestly. Some people are very partial to strawberries. I prefer raspberries myself. Me too. Really? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ready or not, here I come. Are they shot? Yeah. I've got to stay shot. Come out, come out, wherever you are. I smell the blood of an Englishman. <laughs> you should try it. Even if 
always say the same thing. It sounds very different with the rest of you. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Anna. I'll go first. I've always wanted a brother, and if I had one, I'd want him to be just like you. Your turn. Um, I can't think of anything. <laughs> Not allowed, <laughs> come on. Right, uh... <laughs> I actually quite enjoyed singing in the church choir. <laughs> <laughs> Feeble! <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, I haven't got a best girl. But if I did, I'd want her to be just like you. Sorry. No. I should get back. That's all. Bert, he'll be getting anxious. It's a daft game, anyway. Yeah. Who, who taught you it? I can manage. Like you said, it's not your job. Have you got it in for me? I haven't. A business over Tom. Can't you let bygones be bygones? That. Oh, so I've done something else, have I? I don't like being spoken of lightly. What? You were talking about me. Down in the kitchen. Pringle said. If I had sixpence for every time a name's mentioned in the kitchen, I'd buy myself a diamond ring. What was I supposed to have said then? It doesn't matter what you said, Ned Jones. But if you think I'd look twice your way, you've got another thing coming. <laughs> if you want to know, it was Cook who said you were after me. I know how straight-laced you are, don't worry. I'm not straight-laced. I just know what's what. The nursery is no place for funny business. Funny business? You know what I mean. So you're gonna die an old maid, are you? And what if I do? There's more to life than that. I don't know what you're missing. The trouble with you, Ned Jones, is that you don't know what a decent girl is. All over the place in my time. You like man's born and bred, are you? Yeah. Like Matty. Never thought of getting out. Nah. Seems to be down to the ground. My mum and dad are always going on about it's going downhill from when they were young, but I can't see it. Oh. Mind you, we had that bloke killed round here, as you must have heard about it. Oh yeah, yeah. I think I saw it in the paper. Cockfight, wasn't it? Ah, bare knuckle fight. It's only a matter of time till the police get the bloke who did it. I thought they didn't have a description. Nah, they didn't at first. Someone's just come forward. got very far. If we spread out, we'll find her in no time. We'll go this way. Right. I'm ready.
Mrs. Sinjin would like tea for her and her sister. Anything else? 22 pounds of fancy cake, model of Buckingham Palace in sponge sugar. Just tea and bread and butter. Before you meet a bear, you just have to pull a face like this. And they run off. Thank you. It's all right. Lydia! 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 I said before. I know, Jack, please. It's a grand day. Liar. I'm not the liar, you're the liar. You said your father fought with no kitchen, and that was the lie. It was not. All oh, right, calm down. I thought we were supposed to be tracking Lydia. He started it. You don't suppose Indian scouts fall out at each other, do you? Randall, Bertie doesn't have a sister, does he? Oh, well, he's got lots of brothers. There's Charles and Nathaniel and Henry. Liar. Master Tom. Bertie. Bertie, come on. Don't get upset. That's what Tom wanted. I'm not a liar. I know you're not. And I do have a sister. In heaven. Oh, Bertie. I'm sorry, no one told me. Are they her clothes in the night nursery? The ones you were worried about this morning. What was her name? Charlotte. It must have been very sad when she went away. She went to a better place. Come here. Lydia! Yes? Mrs. Heaton's carriage has arrived, madam. Thank you, Potter. You must write next time and we shall dine with Arnold and Gerald. You know how I detest town. Perhaps a spell with us in Norfolk would do you good. Your colour seems a little hectic. Does it? One should deal with these things before they become too serious. Mother's brooch. Oh, no. I had word on Thursday. It was a sort of low fever they get over there, with the mosquitoes, I believe. All afternoon you've made conversation, no? There was a letter from her solicitors and a packet with the brooch in. There's very little to discuss, Victoria. She had no estate. There's an end to it. Surely she sent a message? No. But she must have given the solicitors instructions to send us word. She was thinking of us. They were obliged to notify us. We were her next of kin. Did you never hope you'd hear from her again? Something? She died a long time ago. Oh, Lavinia, you, you loved her too. You were older, you have more memories. One can train oneself out of remembering. But I want to remember. And I can remember so little. If only we could speak of her. You are distressing yourself unnecessarily. Get your maid to bathe your temples. Goodbye, Victoria.
Why would she do that now? Looks like a scandal. I don't know where you pick up such words, Harriet St. John. Lydia said. Lydia! If Mama ran away with Captain Mason, would we never see her again? That's nonsense, Harriet. You, you were sleepy and you heard Lydia telling stories. It all got mixed up. Lydia! If we find Lydia's footprints, then we can follow them. Lydia! Bertie, you know you were worried about something this morning. Something to do with Charlotte? I couldn't find her cup. Her cup? I mean, there are just clothes in the drawer. Or maybe it's been moved. It's always there. No one's allowed to touch. I just look. Do you think that's Lydia's, Randall? <coughs> I found her! Everyone, I found her! Come on, Bertie. Lydia, where have you been? Well, I went, and I couldn't find it at the path, like, and it all looks the same. I don't know, Lydia. Where were you when they were handing out the brains, eh? It's not my fault. I've never been here before, and I would have asked for directions sooner. But some people were too busy spooning to notice. Jack. What? Lydia. Hey, what's all this about spooning? Better ask Hannah. We were just talking, that's all. Honestly. I believe you. There's just been a misunderstanding. You mustn't pay any attention to Jack, you know. He gets a bit carried away with himself. I've gone and spoil everything, haven't I? You should never have asked me. Don't be silly. We wouldn't have caught a single fish for a start. My children have had a wonderful time tracking you through the woods. Come on. You must look like a proper scarecrow. And nothing a bit of spitting. Give this to Lydia, and you might say you're sorry while you're at it. She's the one that got lost. What have I done? Only made her think you're as good as caught, you know? Me? You'll need your tip for... Anyone could have got lost in those woods. Can't have been pleasant. No, it wasn't. Now, Lydia, I, I don't want you to think... I, I mean, I hope you won't find it, uh untoward if I say that... I, I might have led you to think certain things. I, I think you're a lovely girl, but it's strictly friends is what I mean. I'm sorry. Friends, then, eh? Do I get a smile? <laughs> Go on. Eh? <laughs> Suits him, doesn't it? Like you've got the troubles of the world on your shoulders. Not quite. That's oh, just Bertie says something's gone missing. A cup. That doesn't sound too serious. Well, it turns out that Bertie had a baby sister who died. They kept some of her things. Probably christening cup then. Hmm. Fretting about it, is he? Well, he knows how easily he gets the blame. Well, I'd have a proper look round if I were you. And if it doesn't turn up, I'll talk to the butler. That way, Simmons can't blame Bertie. Or you, for that matter. You've got the sun. I, I 
picture these. Oh, they're very nice, aren't they? For wild flowers. But we mustn't keep them in the night nursery. Take baby's breath away. Oh, I used to freckle at your age. We'll get you some lemon juice. Well, aren't you going to come and sit down? I suppose Nanny Wickham didn't have much to say for herself. Hmm? cost. Mind, I haven't had one new for five years. What was it you wanted? Nothing. Enter. What can I do for you, Randall? I wanted to ask your opinion on something, Mr. Bowles. How can I help you? I understand Charles and Bertie had a baby sister, Charlotte, who died. Indeed. Sad business. It appears some of her things have been kept, and Bertie has brought it to my attention that a cup has gone missing. Ah. Missing or mislaid? It appears Bertie goes through the things quite regularly. Children play with things. They're easily lost. He may even have told you to prevent himself getting into trouble. Bertie is not a devious child. I haven't mentioned it to anyone. Even Nanny Simmons? You did right to come to me first. I can leave it with you then? I will deal with the matter in my own way. Yes, Mr. Bowles. I'm sorry to have disturbed you. For breakfast. You could have some too. And Lydia got the biggest one and she told stories. Stories? Ghost stories or fairy stories? Nothing frightening, I hope. A little frightening. She said that. Tired out, madam. Of course. You can tell me about it tomorrow. You're very tired. Is this new, Mama? No, darling. Oh. You'd be better off in your bed. You're all that fresh air. Funny, isn't it? Mm. I've been breathing fresh air all my life before I came to London, and I never felt any different then. <laughs> Good evening, my lady. Good evening, Lydia. What do you have to say to her ladyship? Thank you ever so much for letting me go out today, my lady. Oh, no, really, it's Lord Hugh you should thank. He's the one who mentioned it to me. Now, you go to the kitchen, get some lemon juice. Yes, Nanny Collins. I know Pringle's job. Mm, I didn't have the heart. Quiet, isn't it? They're putting their feet up. Seems it's a bit busy while we're out. 
Nej, nej. Nej. You were a help today. Thanks, Sarge. Within the next week. I don't know what you mean. You know I don't like trouble in the house. You won't hear any more about it. If I'm being accused, I'll pack my bags here and now, Mr. Bowles. Now, no one's accusing you of anything. There's others around here should be asked. I merely mention it to you. Ah, <laughs> oh, Gibbons, at last. I'm dying of thirst here. Another bottle of hop, if you please? No, you don't understand, Henry. She's a lovely girl. <clears throat> Indeed. Paul, who goes there? Friend or foe? Oh, it's you, Lydia. I thought my stepmama might be spying on me. Uh, no, sir. I'm sorry, sir. She knows she's meant to use the back stairs. I dare say Lydia's on some urgent errand involving the blessed infant Ivo, aren't you, Lydia? Of course you are. Well, what are you waiting for, Gibbons? The cellar calls. Most irregular, Lydia. <laughs> Sorry, sir. Oh, how is the country? Very nice, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> it was ever so nice of you to put a word in with her ladyship. My pleasure. I'm ever so grateful. Well, perhaps you can do me a favour in return. Of course, sir. Anything. Anything? I like the sound of that. Alas, I must bid you good night. Good night, sir. <laughs> <laughs> 